Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over an upcoming cold and snowy week for much of the eastern and central United States. We're going to be going over all of the storms that could be moving through portions of the northern United States, as well as some of those snow potentials, especially at the later part of the video. We'll also talk about those cold and windy conditions that will be experienced over portions of the northeast, and generally we'll give you a good 10 day outlook for your temperatures. Uh, so we have a lot to go through in today's video. We have a lot of information that I'm going to try and pack into about 10 or 12 minutes of content so hopefully you guys stick around all the way until the end also leave a like on the video subscribe and turn on notifications it really helps uh, the videos get out to more people and it also uh, helps me grow my channel and I really want to say thank you to all of you who have helped me grow my channel so far so here would be the uh, current uh, National Weather Service page we have those uh, flood warnings in effect for portions of North Carolina and Virginia some areas in North Carolina saw over a foot of rainfall uh, because of this stalled front that was just kind of sitting like this so uh, definitely they have a lot of issues with flooding currently going on and hopefully uh, they get those resolved we have red flag warnings in effect for Nebraska and Kansas we also see high wind warnings and high wind watches in effect uh, in those golds and the kind of darker uh, gold if you could say uh, almost a brown uh, over portions of the Rockies and also portions of the Intermountain West so we also see some winter weather advisories in the purple winter storm warnings in the pink that's because of a system that's going to be coming into the north uh, into the northwest and then kind of dipping uh, east, uh, southeastward I'll probably uh, I'll probably actually make an, a video on that uh, later on in the week. I'm probably gonna put a poll up on my channel asking you guys which uh, which system you want me to cover the one that's gonna be impacting the northeast or the one that's gonna be impacting uh, the northwest because they're both gonna ha be happening right around the same time and I don't know if I can fit two videos on both of those subjects. So definitely uh, respond to that poll when I do post it. So here to be the temperature anomaly map from the European Ensemble model. It collection of about 51 models and let's get right into it so this is showing you how below or above normal it is uh, compared to your normal of course we see in the yellows, the oranges, the reds, and the browns, as well as the whites, we're looking at some of those above average temperatures in the blues, the greens, the purples, even the pinks and magentas. That's where you're looking at some of those below normal temperatures. So uh, this would be for tomorrow morning. We're looking at some of that cold air scattered through portions of the Great Lakes, as well as over portions of the western United States. This one for the Great Lakes is not going to be your big uh, cold air mass. In fact, this warm air that's kind of coming out of Canada, uh, of uh, Mexico actually is going to actually uh, move further out to the east so you will actually get into a warmer pattern uh, for a little bit and then you should go right back into a colder and chillier pattern uh, as we got earlier on in the week so here would be what your actual low temperatures look like for Saturday and we're looking at maybe 20s 30s for many as you get further to the south that's where you're looking at 40s 50s and 60s in the southeast and the south central United States uh, but for much of the country you're going to be in the 40s 30s and 20s now now here would be the uh, here would be the temperature anomaly map for Sunday. We see that big warm air mass that's kind of lifting through. Uh, we're going to see a system that's going to go by. That's going to be bringing in some very warm temperatures. But on the back end, look what's happening. We're seeing that cold air on the back end. So this is going to be a system that's going to change up your pattern. You're going to end up seeing all this cold air, which by this point would be still in central Canada. It hasn't made its way further enough uh, to the south to get into the U.S. But eventually that very cold air bottled up in northern Canada will actually uh, come down into the northeastern uh, quarter of the United States I guess you could say so basically uh, for much of these regions you will be getting into much of that cold air uh, and let's time that out and let's look at when that actually happens so here would be your uh, low temperatures for Sunday Generally, they're going to be in the 20s for portions of the Northeast and for the Midwest and Rockies, 30s everywhere to the south of there. And then uh, as you get even further south into the Great Lakes, into the Tennessee Valley, parts of the Southeast and South Central United States, as well as along parts of the West Coast, you'll probably stay fairly warm in the 50s and 60s. Now, here would be your uh, temperature anomalies on Monday, and uh, this would be November 16th. That very cold air is starting to creep into parts of the 
the uh, into the United States, and we're looking at uh, that would be in this is all in Celsius. So the actual low temperatures are in Fahrenheit. The temperature anomalies are in Celsius. So uh, even though in Celsius this is around 13 degrees below average, that's closer to 25 or 30 degrees below average in Fahrenheit. So that is very very cold air up in Canada, and that's going to be unleashing into the eastern United States. So uh, here would be uh, by Monday. Here's your low temperatures, and we're looking at 30s, 20s for many, and this is when you're going to get your first shot of chillier air. It's still not going to be that cold by this point. This would be by Tuesday, November 17th, and we're starting to see kind of a finger of cold air start to push into parts of Ontario and, and Quebec, and even getting down into Wisconsin and Minnesota, and that is still uh, not fully into the United States, and eventually it's going to take a little bit of time, but eventually it should get into there, and that's also going to be happening with a system that's going to kind of move through portions of the Great Lakes and bring in some very windy conditions, and that'll also allow some lake effect snow, and that's where some of these areas in the Northeast and Great Lakes could get some of their snowfall. Now, here would be by Tuesday, the 17th of November, we're looking at colder conditions up in the upper Midwest, the interior Northeast, 30s getting fairly far to the south. Basically, uh, if you split the uh, continental United States in half, that's where your 30 degree line is. And then further south of there, that's where you're in the 40s and 50s and even 60s in some ca uh, some cases. Now, here would be uh, Wednesday morning at the 18th of November. And this is when you start to get into a northwestern, uh, northwest uh, flow in parts of the Northeast where you're looking at some of that wind coming out of the northwest coming out of canada and it's going to be fairly cold and chilly uh and here are your actual temperatures for that day your low temperatures and they are going to be chilly they're going to be in the 20s and teens for many areas and even looking at some of your uh some of your feels like temperatures uh your wind chills you're looking at maybe 20 teens for many areas just inland and then even single digits and below zero as you get further inland and in a little bit of an elevation uh in an a little bit of elevation. So here would be by Thursday, that cold air still lingering for the East Coast, that warm air now moving into parts of the central United States. And for those of you in the central and western United States by this point who like the cold and snow, look up here in western Canada. This model doesn't go out far enough, but eventually you would see this coming down and uh, kind of unleash again. So it's going to be a fairly fast moving pattern. You'll get into cold for a couple days, warm for a, a couple days. So it's going to be kind of an all over the place pattern. So you won't be stuck in one pattern, uh, kind of like what we had in the summertime. Now, here to be by Thursday, uh, the, uh, not November 19th, and we're looking at, again, that cold air still kind of lingering for the East Coast, 20 te uh, 20s, teens, uh, and even single digits for portions of the Northeast. Getting further south into the Southeast, these areas might actually get uh, some of their first frosts, uh, so that's definitely something that you have to keep in mind if you do live within that region, uh, because it will be in the 30s. Here's your, uh, here's your wind chill temperatures for Thursday morning, November 19th, uh, and we're looking at below zero, anywhere that's in uh, this shading uh, that would be for interior Maine and, t and some of the higher elevations in New Hampshire and uh, upstate New York but generally it should be in the teens for many areas Thursday will probably be the coldest day uh, and that's mainly because you have a stronger wind flow out of the northwest so it will get uh, fairly cold. We'll also look at some of your wind speeds later on in the video. Now, here to be uh, by Friday, uh, November 20th, and we're looking at that warm air starting to move through. Here's what your low temperatures look like, and they have really moderated, and they're pretty close to average, except in parts of the southeast. You guys are starting to get a little bit chillier uh, for those regions, just marginally chillier. Now, here to be by uh, Saturday, November 21st, that cold air may be lingering for the immediate east coast, as you at just west of there it should start to get a little bit warmer here's what your low temperatures look like on that day generally they're going to stay in the 30s and 20s further to the north 40s 50s 60s as you get further to the south and then as we get to uh sunday uh and i believe this is the last day that we'll look at the northern uh, i would say fifth of the united states of getting into some of that colder air and as you get uh further south maybe the bottom three-fifths of the united states looking at some of those warmer conditions and then here's where you 
your low temperatures look like on Sunday, November 22nd, and we're looking at actually some of those uh, colder than normal temperatures, some 30s, 20s for the northeast and for the Midwest and Rockies, but it will get warmer, especially for parts of the central U.S. Now, here would be your uh, maximum wind gusts. So this is over the next 10 days, the maximum wind gusts that you would have felt, and most of these uh, very high wind gusts for uh, this region is most likely going to come on uh, Wednesday and Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that time frame. So you're looking at gusts. This is all in miles per hour that are or actually not. So this would be even higher in miles per hour uh, where they might even be approaching tropical storm strength as you start to get into the yellows. That's where you're at tropical storm strength. And then if you're in those browns, which none of the areas are, but in the darker reds, that's where you're approaching uh, hurricane strength wind speed. So it is going to be a very windy day and all of these uh, all of the wind is going to be coming out of the northwest off of the Great Lakes, so that will funnel in some lake effect snowfall. So let's start talking about your snowfall totals. Here's what the European model shows uh, for your snowfall totals. This is the 10-day outlook going through the 23rd of November. The European model wants to bring some sort of system through the uh, north central United States. We'll have to see how true that is, but uh, that would be in the longer term. That would be right around day 9 or 10. So this would be later on. This is something that is unconfirmed right now, and we really have not a lot of uh, not a lot of model guidance on that storm. But this is from all of that lake effect for the most part, and it will be fairly uh, high in terms of the amount of lake effect that you're going to see. You will also get some lake effect throughout these regions as well, and you will see a couple systems, minor systems, not to this magnitude that you're seeing right here, but some minor 1 to 2 inch systems come out of Alberta and Saskatchewan, Canada, dip down into the Midwest, and potentially bring a coating or two uh, or of snowfall, and I'll definitely be covering those uh, storms on my channel. Here would be going through November 28th on the European Ensemble model. Again, a this is now an ensemble, so a collection of 51 models. So this is kind of giving you a good idea of how likely it is that you see snowfall, not how much snowfall necessarily, because these models aren't very good at how much snowfall you'll see. It's more of what li uh, how likely is it that you'll see snowfall. And if you're in those lighter grays, that's where I'll give you right around a 20% chance. If you're in the darker grays, that's right around a 40 or 50% chance. If you're in the medium shade of blue that's probably right around a 70 percent chance and if you're in those purples and pinks and anything above that that's where you're closer to a 90 to 100 percent chance of seeing snowfall within that time period at least some snowfall so of course you could still see more than that uh but that that at least one inch line or that dusting line it does get fairly far to the south on this model run now here would be uh going through the, the 12th of december so that the last one was 15 days out here's 30 days out and that two inch line is getting much further to the south uh, so a lot of these areas could see their first snowfall by the, by this time period and then definitely by this time period a lot of areas are seeing their first snowfalls uh, and this would be by uh, the 27th of December so this is 45 days out and we're looking at heavy snowpack through the Great Lakes and the interior northeast heavy snowpack out west and up into Canada and potentially that snow line getting a lot further to the south so we still have to see what will happen with those systems I'll be covering all of it on my channel with my exclusive snowfall graphics that you won't find anywhere else I'll also be covering a lot of different weather pattern events so make sure you are subscribed make sure you have notifications on and make sure you like the video because it really does help out the channel and the video uh, so make sure uh, you go you go do all that if you do i really want to uh, thank you uh, for doing that because it really does help my channel anyways guys that is going to wrap it up for today's video and i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye